Where it comes to allocating the work, uh, Conway's law rules supreme. Uh, Melbourne Conway uh, proposed this law in 1967 and he, he, in an article he submitted, I believe, to the Harvard Business Review, who rejected the article on the grounds that he couldn't prove it, uh, or he had no supporting evidence for his proposition. Uh, now, there has since been a great deal of work done uh, that supports uh, Conway's proposition, which is that, and I'll quote it because it's important to get it right, Organizations which design systems are constrained to produce designs which are copies of the communication structures of those organizations. Now frequently this is loosely cited as um, uh, the design of something will reflect the structure of the organization. Yes and no. It reflects the structure of the communications within the organization, not the organization. However, both are, you know, they, they most frequently coincide. Now the effect of Conway's law, and this has been shown time and time again, um, if you want, if something needs to be tightly coupled and needs a lot of coordination during its development, you'd better allocate it to the one team or to a co-located team uh, where they can um, talk and uh, sort it out. If, however, you have components that are fairly loosely coupled and there's a reason to be defined interface between them, or you can define an interface between them, then you can have these developed by um, uh, loosely uh, coordinated uh, teams. Uh, now, this might seem kind of trivial if you're talking about a smallish system, but frequently they're not. Um, if you're talking about a large system where you might have um, so we're talking about something like the control system of a submarine or um, you know, um, a vehicle or something of that nature, where you're likely to have um, tens of uh, different components for different reasons and they all have to be um, fitted onto the, um, the system in some fashion, usually through a, um, a message bus or some other communication system then by its very nature you're going to have to divide that work among teams that probably will not be co-located and that is going to affect the architecture. Um, now the, the humorous example I heard was uh, somebody wanted a compiler and there are three different teams um, allocated to do the work. Now it was no surprise that the compiler came back as a three-pass compiler and when how else are you going to build a compiler? So usually um, the software structure tends to reflect the, the uh, communication structures within the organization. However, there are beginning to be some notable exceptions and the, the known ones are organizations like Amazon and Netflix who um, sorted out what kind of a product they wanted and then very deliberately changed their organization structure to provide the, the uh, structure and the communications that would result in the software they wanted. So where normally it is the, the, the software follows the organization, in these cases it was the organization followed the software.